Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY, that's 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in New Hampshire, Oregon, and Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash football. Welcome in, everyone, to Bear Bets, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. DraftKings Sportsbook is the number one place to bet touchdowns. And this week, new customers can get five can bet $5, and you get $150 in bonus bet if your first bet wins. It's a pretty good deal. Bet five, if your bet wins, you get $150. I'll take that. Download the app, use the pro- pro- promo code BearBets. That's BearBets when you sign up. DraftKings Sportsbook, the crown is yours. Jeff. I just memorized the the read that we've been doing it all year, basically, and and now uh, the right before the end of the regular season, we uh, we, we change it up and keep, keep me on my toes here. I, uh, catcher catcher put down two fingers through a through a breaking ball when I wasn't expecting one, and, and had me swinging out of my shoes there. Bear, you are nimble like the cultural playoff committee. You're always dipping and diving and dodging and moving around and and and, and having new marks and figuring out where to go. Uh, on the fly, so I, I appreciate it, Bear. You, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not as nimble. I'm not as nimble as old number number seventy six. There, <laughs> hands up, proper position. Are your elbows in, Bear? I can't tell. Uh, you know, uh, elbows elbows in. absolutely in. Absolutely. There we go. Every, every, he, everyone he, always side control the pads. Puts a line thing with, with the elbows out. You, you have your elbow, you have your elbows in. That power. That power. Um, look, Bear. We spent so much time obviously talking about the cultural playoff and the 12 team playoff. And we get to this time of year, two weeks after the regular season. And out of 134 teams, there's like uh, 15 uh, like that'll have 12 spots uh, at, at this point. So, you know, yeah. we always talk about, you know, the playoff. People get very angry about playoff rankings. And guess what, guys? They make it up each week. They're humans. Like they're good. They have different criteria every week. There's no way, there's no way to have a consistent criteria because. Some losses matter more. Some wins matter more. Some losses don't matter as much. Some wins don't matter as much. The situation, time of season, who you're playing, it doesn't. It, it changes right every week. So um, we're going to figure it out. We'll probably have the best twelve. There might be a team, a team like Tennessee. That's about it. That's left out that might that might deserve to be in, or maybe a Texas if they lose to A and M. But otherwise, the teams that are deserving there are going to be in. And, and in the end, I say this all the time. People don't understand this. In the end. The goal is finding a champion. Yes, it's an entertainment product, and we enjoy watching the 12-team play, but we'll enjoy watching the 12-team play. But in the end, the goal is finding a champion, and there will not be a team left out there that can actually win a championship. And the whole goal of this whole thing is to have those six teams in. Right, the, the goal is to get the best 12 teams in the playoff, or really the best 11, because you're going to get the group of five champion, who and none of us are going to think is going to be one of the best 12, but... So you get the best 11 and you got the group of five qualifier. That's the goal. And like you said, but, but that being said, before the year started, I, I think a lot of people just kind of felt, and I'm no offense to you and you'll probably, you might take offense to it or think I'm wrong, but most people before the year just kind of assumed it was going to be Ohio state or Georgia that would win the college full playoff. And there, and there were people who were on the opposite side of that. I mean, I bet that Ohio state and Georgia versus the field prop, uh, at South Point, when Chris Andrews put that up uh, early in the year, so now you can probably make a case for what do you what do you think, Jeff? Six teams probably to win them? five. Uh, uh, Oregon, I have, Ohio State, Georgia, Alabama, Ole Miss. Do, do you think Texas can win? Their defense is great, but they haven't been super impressive. Yeah. Um, I think Bama could win three games in a row if they had to. If they win the SEC championship. Uh, I think mean, they're the six team bear. So we have you know two Big Ten teams, four SEC teams, um, and we'll talk about Ole Miss a lot later, guys. They're really good. I don't think people understand like power rankings wise. You look at where they are; they're much higher than uh, their AP ranking or their CFP ranking because um, you know they're they're a good football team, especially on defense. So um, I think those are six teams bear. But you look at sort of where this breaks down. Um, 
you know, the five seed might have a pretty a pretty <laughs> cushy uh, <laughs> a schedule for for not having a bye. Right. I mean, right now you get the Big Twelve champion. Well, at least right now, BYU is ahead. They might not win the championship. And then you get Boise State on neutral field, and then you play the one seed, which, look, the way, the way it is now, Ohio State or Oregon, whoever the one seed, would have to play Alabama most likely in that, in that, in that quarterfinal game. It's a much tougher task than playing Boise. No offense to any Boise State fan out there. Um, so, you know, that five seed's intriguing there. Um, you know, the loser of the Big Ten t- championship, if Ohio State wins this weekend, Probably is the five seed. I know we talked about this via text. Maybe Georgia gets the five seed, but uh, if Oregon is twelve and zero and loses to Ohio State by less than a touchdown, oh, the I five. would imagine that they're the five seed, right? So, um, you know, I'm curious to see if Colorado wins out, whether or not um, you know they are ahead of Boise State, and that means Boise State the the twelve seed. They have said the committee said they're not worried about rematches. I am kind of curious, so Bear, if they would have an Oregon Boise State rematch in Eugene again. Uh, which happened week two, or they would make them the 11 seed and let the six seed deal with Boise State. That would be interesting. That, that I, I actually hadn't even thought of that with the bracket that you potentially could get a uh, a rematch of that game. And I wonder how Oregon would feel uh, facing Boise for a second time this year now, later in the year, kind of knowing Boise and, and knowing the offense and knowing how good uh, Genty is. And I wonder how, how Boise would feel about that, knowing that they nearly – Hold and hold it up. So, yeah, but I'm curious once this uh once this bracket comes out yeah, in a couple of weeks, like you're gonna wind up like people are gonna be like shocked that you're probably gonna have like the one seed favored to win, uh, the the two seed probably second choice, and then like the five seed could be the third choice. Uh, like people yeah. I think are gonna have a hard time like saying like, well, wait, how are they how are they the, the third choice yeah. or the second choice to win and, and and they're the five seed and they're gonna have to play four games. Like people people I think they're are gonna kinda bang their bang their heads like how is that possible? Not really understanding the way uh the seedings work. But yeah, Texas is kind of where I like I think we all think Texas is there is is good. I mean the defense is elite. But I'm not sure if, like, if I were willing to cut one team out from that group of six, Oregon, Ohio State, Georgia, Alabama, Ole Miss, I think Texas would be the team ultimately that I uh, that I took out of that group of six. And if I made, yep. it, yeah, made yep. it my own little fab five. I, I was watching the Texas offense against Arkansas on film the other day just to look at their offensive line because they're a Joe Moore Award candidate. And it just the offense sort of just was, meh, sort of mess sometimes, Bear. Like, it should be better. It isn't. Uh, and I think if, if the game is put on their quarterback, that's a problem for Texas. And if they lose to AM, they'll have zero quality wins, right? I mean, they just right. they wouldn't. And that'd be a hard part to get them in over Tennessee, who has quality wins, right? They have those, those quality wins this year. And so it'd be curious to see what the committee does. Plus, AM would certainly have a case to be in because they'd be in the SEC championship game if they win this weekend and beat Texas. Um, and so, you know, about this year that I think I, I didn't expect to, to, to feel this way heading into 12 team playoff fair is. You know, I've always thought the top three teams are basically the three that can win every year, and it's been that way for many years now. But would it surprise you if any of the six teams we mentioned played one of the other six teams and the game went either direction? It wouldn't surprise you if, they, if, if round robin, all teams play each other and everyone was 500. Like, I think it's one of those right. years where on a given weekend in a quarterfinal or semifinal game, um, you know, you, a ball bounces your way or not, and that's you lose by three or you lose by seven. Uh, where in other years we've had those first round games, <laughs> even in in the, in the fourteen playoff, and one team wins by twenty one points. That feels unlikely. We get the semis this year, or even some of the quarterfinal games. So I'm looking forward to it. We'll have some good football. A, a lot of football left to get to. Yeah, and we've had chaos of November. Man, it is hard to play November with expectation. You haven't been there before. Yep, exactly. I'm looking at Colorado this weekend at Kansas. Right, like it's those are those games where. You haven't been there before. Boise had that situation happen last week, even Arizona State, right? You haven't had to play with expectations in years and years and years. Now you control your own destiny. Indiana this weekend, expectations at Ohio State. How do you deal with that? So something to consider when you handicap a lot of these games is the emotional part of having to play these games for you know, for, for the first time in many years for a lot of these programs. You know, Ole Miss playing for their live a couple weeks back and in, in, in beating Georgia at home. Now they're now, now they're kind of seen as the buzz team, the now team. But what, what yeah. you hit on earlier 
about like uh, kind of a round robin and all, all these teams basically 500 against each other, about <laughs> beating each other. That's what we've got in the SEC. You've, you've got Alabama who, who beat Georgia, who beat Tennessee, who beat Alabama, and jo- Ole Miss who beat Georgia. It, it's all this kind of uh, round robinish group group of teams that they're all kind of similar right now. And I think that's what the committee, I think, is having a hard time ranking. Like there is that ceiling right now. There's kind of like that paper ceiling where Indiana is at five and Penn State at four and Texas is at three. Like they're waiting for that Ohio State Indiana game to make, I think, a massive like reshuffling of everything. It's almost like right yeah. now the committee is just kind of guessing and because they're unsure. They're basically just loss ordering and hoping the way the results play out the rest of the year keeps them from having to make a very difficult decision. Because I think I, I don't have a photographic memory of all of the past college football playoff rankings in the four team era. But this one feels like they have taken a very, uh, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, but they've been very cautious and they've been very conservative yeah. and they've been, okay, you, you you have zero losses. You're ahead of a team with one loss, And then like, we're going to get down and get to the, uh, uh, the, the group of two losses. So we will see uh, once either Ohio state picks up that second loss or Indiana picks up the first loss what happens with that group of two loss SEC teams. And I think most people in that room probably think Alabama and Georgia and, and Ole Miss are probably better uh, than, than some of the teams that are ranked ahead of them, but they can't move them up right now. So we'll see what happens. A group that certainly has no losers includes myself, Jeff, well, maybe not myself, but certainly Jeff, Sammy P, and Will Hill uh, in the gambling group chat. The gang is back again, gambling group chat as the college football season winds towards its unfortunate conclusion but the uh, the, the biggest couple of weeks of the year with college football playoff uh, ramifications upon us every game magn- magnified uh, a good bit and uh, here to break it down as usual with Jeff and I Sammy P and Will Hill and there really isn't a place that we shouldn't start other than or should start I say double negative whatever the hell that was Indiana at Ohio State, undefeated 10-0 Indiana, uh, going to the shoe to take on Ohio State as a 13.5-point underdog now. And, of course, obviously, this will be our Super 6 game sponsored by DraftKings Sportsbook. Uh, Super 6 column will be out later in the week. So, of course, the obvious question, what will the outcome of this game be? Um I'm undecided right now. I'm leaning towards Indiana playing well early. We have seen Ohio State with a lot of slow starts this year and then ultimately turning it on uh, as the game goes on. But, but Jeff, I'm going to start with you because you made a good point uh, in, the group th- in the group thread the other day about uh, Indiana and well-coached teams typically spar- start well as all. So is that a little bit of a lean towards the Hoosiers plus the points here, coupled with Ohio State's injuries now on the offensive line, the unfortunate uh, McLaughlin injury, the center now for the year now with the Achilles? That was a yeah. unit that played really well at Penn State, and now they got to shuffle it again a couple of days before their biggest game of the year. Is that a little IU lean maybe on the, uh, the group text a couple of days ago? So what I said was we've seen good teams uh, with good coaching staffs play well early in games after a bye week. Indiana's off a bye week. You didn't answer with saying Washington's going to beat Oregon. I didn't really appreciate that. Oregon's also off a bye when they play in a couple weeks. But uh, here's my concern about about this game just from a big picture perspective. This is why I think like an Indiana first half wager might be a good way to start and maybe the Ohio State full game. I understand it's not so simple sometimes to say one team has the better players, but Ohio State has better players all over the roster. Yes, their offensive line is a little beat up. But I, I get that. It's a problem. Indiana's run defense has been good, but they have faced zero rushing teams like in the top 75 in the country in yards per game. Like they faced nobody. It's okay to acknowledge that while also acknowledging that Indiana – has played good football against those teams. So to me, guys, I think they're well coached. We know they're well coached. I don't think it. They're well coached. They're, they've heard for two weeks about how they're not going to keep this game close and their playoff chances are in peril and all those things. I think they start fast in this game, but I think Ohio State's athletes and their physicality and just having better football players leads to a cover by the time this game is over, Will. That's how I view this game. I, Indiana starts fast. 
Ohio State wins and covers. I'd rather be on Ohio State side of Indiana here over 60 minutes. I think Ohio State just has better football players, and they're playing for a spot in the, in the Big Ten Championship game. I like Indiana, uh, and I understand that you might turn this game on and two drives in, you say, uh-oh, uh, my team here has a bunch of transfers from James Madison, and I'm going up against blue chip five-star guys. I'm going to get blown out. I'm going to look like an idiot. Fine, that might be the case, but y- you hit on it. Uh, they've heard for two weeks of how much are they going to lose by? What if they lose by 17? What if they lose by 20? Just everyone assuming they're going to lose. They're off a bye. They're well coached, and I just think they're good. I, I know that the schedule is what it is, but that what 56 to 7, 58 to 7 against Nebraska. Nebraska was a three point game with Ohio State. Nebraska beat a Colorado team that might be in the playoff. Uh, they've got good players up front. The kid Kamara is obviously a, a tremendous player, and throwing the Ohio State. Uh, offensive line issues. Ohio State under day can be tight in these big games. We've seen that plenty of times. His teams just get really, really tight. And uh, I just think big picture college football, the best teams are not as dominant as they were three, four, five years ago with the, the NIL and the transfer portal. It's evened it out. It's more parity. Uh, the, the dominant teams are just not quite as dominant. There's no Joe Burrow LSU. There's no 2020 Bama. There's no 2022 Georgia. There's just there's not that team this year. The top of college football is closer to the middle. I think this is a close game. I'll take the points. And, Sammy, I am going to have some Indiana money line. I wouldn't be shocked if Indiana wins this game. I'm actually going to pick oh. Indiana to win the game. I believe Indiana is the toughest team in the country to power rate. I have three sets of ratings. They're all around the same Indiana, anywhere from the 12th to the 15th best team in the country, but they could be the seventh best team in the country. They could be the 23rd best team in the country. We don't know. We will find out a lot on Saturday. I'm inclined to look under, guys. I feel like both defensive lines can win their respective battles. We know that Ohio State's going to be up against it at least early in the game. Indiana's Z line, very, very good. Um, But as Jeff pointed out, how good are they? Are they are they great or are they good? And we have to base that off of who they've played, not what they can do against Ohio State. It's a fascinating handicap. I talked this morning on our show about under 52. It's now 51 and a half, 51. Ooh, sharp guy. No, I I mean 31. 17, Mark it over. 31. I don't know. Like it's the hardest game for me this season really to feel is. confident about. Barry, you passed on it too. Yeah, You're like it, I don't, it is. I don't I, really like, know. I know under would be the way that I would go. Um, I did grab some Indiana plus three sixty, I think it was last week, uh, to miss the playoffs in case they do get blown out. Uh, that number has now dropped dramatically. I think it's like plus two seventy on the no. But hey, if you think if if you agree with the uh, the ESPN uh, playoff predictor that Indiana's got a ninety seven percent chance to make the playoff, then uh, they're the you're the all these sports books are giving out free money with an Indiana like minus three fifty or three sixty to make the playoff. Now, uh, if, if you believe the the math by my former employer. Uh, but I think the under has a couple of things going for it as well, Sammy, with, within the, the game strategy, the, the flow of the game. You saw Indiana against Michigan, the most NFL-type body opponent defense that they're going to play. Couldn't run. This week. Couldn't run the ball. Couldn't move the ball. And that obviously is going to keep their team total down. And what if, I remember in 2014, Mississippi State was number one in the college football, the first college football playoff rankings. They went to Alabama, I think, that following week. And they were a massive underdog. And Dan Mullen and that offensive staff played a super conservative game where it was almost like we they knew they weren't going to win, but they just wanted to keep the score down and have a impressive loss uh, that didn't look like a blowout to maybe keep them from falling too far in the playoff ranking. So I wonder if like we get to the point in the second half where it's kind of Hmm. Indiana is down a couple of scores and it doesn't look like they're really having much success moving the ball. Do we see a lot of time run off the play clock? Do, do we see more runs? Do, do we see kind of a little bit of a four corners offense to maybe play for a cover and maybe have it look no. like a, not a blowout type? No. Win? But I, I don't know. If, Fair. No I chance. Know if I, I don't know if that's in coach six DNA though. That, that, that's no point. chance. Zero chance that he does that. There is zero chance he looks at that scoreboard and says, let's keep it close to make a playoff. That's not his – he he called his entire program soft this offseason. He's not going to go ahead and be soft in that moment. Um, and look, and I think the committee 
they get blown out, they they might want to knock them out. But again, look, we get all worked up about these playoff rankings, but like for who? Like who are you knocking them out for at the moment, right? Like that. There's still a lot of football to be played, and there are teams that you know they can win and lose, and we'll see where Indiana is. I think Indiana is probably in no matter what because there's only one Big Twelve team getting in, probably only one ACC team, mm-hmm. one G five team. Like mm-hmm. who's the fifth SEC team is getting in over eleven and one Indiana? I guess if A and M beats Tennessee, Texas, Tennessee, Tennessee ten and two with the win over Alabama, who may be the SEC champion. Possibly, but they're behind. Like, what would? How far would they? I guess have to drop all the way out of the top twelve. That well, seems unlikely with one loss. So, how, how I mean, many spots? Well, we we see what BYU drop. I think eight spots after a loss. Miami dropped like nine spots after a loss. We, we we've seen teams drop after a loss, which kind of reflects, I think, the mentality of this committee right now that they really are just kind of loss ordering. Like 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 that. That's what they've seen. And I almost just I don't think they know. Like people, the people have such a complaint about like. Texas being third. Look, Texas hasn't done anything. I, I'm not going to get too worked up over anything in the rankings until after we see what happened Saturday in Columbus. Because I, I think that's going to detect Indiana is five because they're undefeated. They got the zero in the loss column. I think there's probably some people in that room that aren't really sure how good they are. But but how good is Penn State? How good is Texas? Like once we see what happens in Columbus, that's going to dictate what happens the, the, the next two weeks. But I don't think we're going to see, like, remember that t- 2022 game, guys, where uh, Michigan State was like 10-1 and one or 9-1 and one or whatever the hell they were, and we really knew they weren't, like, the, the top five team in the country. Like, I think they were at the time when they went to Ohio State and lost 56-7. They'd been playing with fire all year long and got run out because I don't think, A, Ohio State is as good as that team was, and I think Indiana is better than that Michigan State team was. So, any other like general rankings thoughts to do with like Indiana, Ohio State, and and, and the playoff guys before we move on? Well, let me just say two quick things. I was getting more excited to side with Will last night when they showed the reveal. They they did the bracket, and then they're doing the post bracket conversation. And Joey Galloway and Booger McFarland are both saying, well, if Ohio State wins by 14 or 28 or 50, <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh, Indiana's just going to lay down, right? Like that's yeah, exactly. the, So I'm like, oh, now I like Indiana because of what Joey Galloway's saying. And that's never where you want to be as somebody who does this. But there's not one pundit that's saying Indiana can win the game. And Will just said it. No, I'm not I, a pundit, I'm though. Saying, I'm no, saying outside of me. our bubble on oh. this program that – considers all all aspects and all angles and all possibilities, the national narrative is what happens if Indiana gets blown out? Exactly. What happens if Indiana wins the game, right. Bear? Then what happens? Then, then they play Oregon in Indianapolis in a home game. They're, 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 and Ohio, and Ohio State would still be in because they'd have that win over – Penn State, who the committee values a lot. I mean, it's kind of a free roll for Ohio State. They win, win or lose, they're still gonna gonna be in. But 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 you're right. Like I think that, that see that's the spin with with Indiana here. You look at what I mean. I was there for that Nebraska game a couple of weeks back where they had chances inside the five yard line. They just couldn't score a touchdown. They had opportunities to win that game. So that should give Indiana a ton of confidence that they can go there and compete with this team and potentially. If that you, look, you, you never want to play the com- comparative scores about uh, in, Indiana beat Nebraska by whatever. Nebraska only lost to Ohio State by blah. Now that means that Indiana is going to go there and win by 40. No, it's, it's not going to happen that way. But but that, that should give them confidence. And at the same time, if they go there and they don't compete the way that Nebraska did against Ohio State and, and they do lose by multiple scores, how is that in turn uh, reflected in the, in the rankings. I'm, I'm really curious. I, I hope it's a close game. Uh, I, I don't want to see this game g- get out of hand because then the then it'll get ugly. And I, I think 11 and one Indiana will be in a very interesting spot 
come selection day. Let me ask you, Bear, because you're good with these scenarios. A few weeks from now when we're finally putting these teams in, leaving them out, mm -hmm. uh, like last year they got caught with their pants down. Where uh -oh, We either have to leave out a one-loss Bama SEC champ yep. or undefeated Florida State. We're going to make somebody really mad, mad either way. What is that scenario this year as you, you know, get out your crystal ball? What do you think that scenario is that's just, uh-oh, we can't win here. This is a, a nightmare decision. It, it probably a, a nightmare. Mm. I mean, it, it's got to involve it's got to involve Tennessee being ten and two with the win over an SEC champion Alabama uh, against uh, eleven and one Indiana that has a strength of schedule around a hundred that didn't beat a team uh, that is getting a, a point in the poll. I, I think it is that. I mean, I think a couple of the other scenarios that you can work through is what happens if Army, like we don't think Army, uh, it, I mean, I shouldn't speak for you guys. I mean, but yeah. if Army were to beat Notre Dame this week and then beat Tulane, two teams that are in the top 20 of the college football playoff ranking right now, uh, I think they would move past Boise. I think they should move past, Bo past Boise because I think that would be more impressive than anything Boise has done. Uh, what happens if Texas goes to Texas A&M and loses and you've got a 10 and two Texas, which would basically be in Indiana shoes. Like, like they wouldn't have a win worth anything. Like Vandy would be their best win. Most likely it, it's amazing how like, and, and again, it gives the, it gives the perception of that. It's all not on the up and up because Ward Manuel is the, the head, the, the spokesperson for the committee and you've got Indiana and Texas in the top five right now. And they beat a Michigan team, which we all know isn't very good. It just feels like Michigan is getting overvalued uh, in, inside that committee room. So like, I'm not going to get too worked up, but those I think will are a couple of scenarios that we might want to look forward to in the next couple of weeks. There, if Boise gets a buy, there's going to be a call for overhaul of the system one year in. Because the SEC and the Big Ten is not going to – look, Boise's won the games that are on their schedule. You can't, you can't knock it for that. And they – May or may not be better than Colorado or BYU, Arizona State. I don't know. Yeah. Um, they might end up ahead. I, I think Colorado wins out. They'll be ahead of, of, uh, of Boise State in the final standings. But if Boise State, th this is not intended for Boise State to have a bye uh, over any of the SEC teams that are, you know, Georgia, Tennessee, whoever does, you know, is ever not the the, uh, the 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 champion. So I that might overhaul the whole system uh, because I don't think the Big Ten and SEC are going to stand for that. One last thing on this, Bear. Remember, the day of the selection last year, there were books hanging numbers on yes, no playoffs. And we got, I think you got Bama 5-1 to one to make it. Bama was plus 350 to make it. These Lord, books, yeah. they don't know what the hell they're doing. Man, they're guessing. It's, it's an educated guess, but this idea that like it's uh, you know it's an efficient market, they, their guess is as good as ours. So you know, keep an eye on those markets because they can make some mistakes yeah. in those. Yeah, I was very fortunate last year to be – in Indy, which is uh, Indianapolis and Indiana, where uh, those markets were up and available, and the, the 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 leaves were the tea leaves were able to be read very, oh yeah, very well last year, and to be able to get some no prices on Florida State that were ridiculously out of market, and then the, the yes prices on Alabama, uh, and the yes price it, it was it was it worked out well. So yeah, depending on what happens, I might have to. Uh, wonder if Massachusetts is going to offer those will. They put them up here in Connecticut, which they never put them up, but they put them up that day. And I remember a few days before those games, it was conference title weekend. We were having the same quarter round table, you know, kicking around scenarios. And we all said, without a doubt, I remember saying, hey, if Bama wins, if they beat an uh, undefeated Georgia team and they're 12-1 and one SEC champ, forget it. They're in. And they were. So uh, those markets are not always right. Also, yeah. you mentioned Army Bear. I'm sure DraftKings will love this. Just in case you're interested – an Indiana and Army money lane parlay this weekend is twenty five to one. Mm. I I know in, in Will I, we, you and I are on a a separate uh, text thread with, with Steve Fezzik, and I know he uh he he put out Army plus the points uh, the other day, and he even he made a case for Army potentially winning that game, saying that Notre Dame may only get six or seven possessions in that game with, with how Army moves the ball. So to say 25 to one on a uh, two massive underdogs to, to pull outright upsets. I, I wouldn't be uh, opposed to that. Another underdog, which uh, Sammy has gotten a lot of play this week. Uh, a lot of talk about Minnesota. This numbers come down, I think from like 13, 13 and a half down to 11 and a half. Uh, 
hosting Penn State and look, Penn State, we we all kind of know what they are, the the hollow calorie wins that they accrue and compile every every year. It seems like a lot of people are on uh, Minnesota this week, a little bit of a an upset alert. Uh, can you get behind Minnesota now, knowing that you're not really getting the, the best in the number? No, I just want to play it forward and have Georgia come to Happy Valley. Like, can we just get there? That's all I want. And some of these advanced look-ahead numbers are Penn State, pick them, Georgia minus one. How much would we have collectively on Georgia pick them? Oh, all, the <laughs> all the money. All the money. All the money. I get it. I understand it from a power rating standpoint because I pull up the power ratings, right? And I've got Georgia 129 and a half, Penn State 126. So on a neutral, Georgia's four points better. The game is in Happy Valley, but I'm like, wait a minute. I know better than I know better than to what? make Georgia pick them against Penn State. Sammy, uh, in the words of a famous content creator, odd subject to change. <laughs> <laughs> so to answer your question, no, I don't want Minnesota. I want Penn State to host a home game against an SEC team. And we all know what we're going to do. I did see Sully's note in the rundown, though. As a double-digit favorite, Franklin is 48-27 and 2 ATS. That's enough to keep me off the dog. Yeah, and it's usually these type of games like yes. where it's between like 7 and 17 points that they typically take care of business. But why, 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 was, why, did, why was there no Christmas in the Will Hill household this week? Because Daddy had Georgia minus one at Penn State. <laughs> Yeah, I don't have anything here, though. I, I, it'd be dog or nothing, but again, I didn't bet it, so I don't want to get the worst of the number. I could see the path where Minnesota, you know, run game defense, they muck it up. We're, you know, we're at the time of year when, it's, you know, again, it's hard to believe, man, two weeks left in the regular season. It was just August. We were just talking about season previews, and now we're sitting here at Thanksgiving. Just, man, you uh, you blink, and the season just is, is over with. Uh, Big Ten weather, it's cold. It's going to be in the 30s. Wind isn't a huge factor, but I, it'd be a lean towards the dog, but nothing I've played. By the way, I'm glad you said weather. Uh, weather is supposed to be very sketchy uh, in Columbus this week. Uh, you know, snow, mix, 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 a Ooh. mix snow and rain on Friday, and I think a uh, uh, a good bit of rain and potential wind uh, in Columbus uh, for for Indiana Ohio State. So that might uh, help our little underthought there too, Sammy. I hope so. I really, I really do think not to go back. I think Indiana's D line is going to play really well, and then it's going to be hard for Indiana to move the ball on Ohio State. That goes. Without being said, but I did laugh though. One competing sports book yesterday, we talk about look ahead lines for the playoff. They took the four games and then put lines up, and one of the books put up um, Ole Miss pick 'em at Indiana. And I thought, that's, that's not right. That, that number is not right. And then somebody else put it up and it was five and a half. So it is funny. I think the, the books are guessing on what these numbers would be. I can't imagine, Bear. I can't imagine Georgia opens less than two and a half at Penn State. I wouldn't. I, I, I just, you, they know what they're going to write. And then people like us don't help saying how much we're going to bet on Georgia. <laughs> I, I can't imagine they open Georgia pick them against Penn State. I, I doubt it. By the way, Minnesota first half is kind of juicy at the moment. The same idea of team off a of bye. Uh, they're at they're at home. Like I think this is sort of like you know they, they lost their last game to Rutgers. Uh, they would want to play better off a of bye. Minnesota it's six and a half right now. Uh, I might have that come Saturday to sort of play in this system I've been trying to do all all year with you know good not they're okay team right okay team off a of bye bad loss Penn State on the road again. Um, you know I hope maybe get a seven. I doubt it, but uh, I will probably have Minnesota first half in my pocket come Saturday. Army Notre Dame. I know I, I hit on that just uh, quickly before. A anyone have any uh, other thoughts? Uh, I know Sammy, you were hinted at maybe that Army Indiana uh, money line parlay. A anybody have any strong thoughts on this game? I, I don't. I don't know if Notre Dame rips through Army the same way that they rip through Navy. I think the Army defense. I think they're a little bit more ball control. So I, I think this game certainly will be will be closer than the. The, the Notre Dame Navy game that we all kind of saw the same way a few weeks back about Notre Dame just kind of rolling through Navy. Well, we know what the books are going to need. The books are going to need Ohio State to win and cover. The books are going to need Notre Dame to win and cover. These are public sides, whether we admit it or not. Indiana's public and Army is public. That doesn't mean they can't win. 
It's just the way it's shaping up right now. You know, we yeah. talked to a lot of the same guys in Vegas. One guy says, we can't write any bets on Notre Dame. And I'm like, oh, okay, so Notre Dame should win. But I thought that last week, too, and Notre Dame's up 35 to nothing. I'm holding minus 21 and a half, and they don't cover it. <laughs> you know, because they, like, they Freeman fudged it. They, I don't know how they didn't cover yeah. 21 and a half. And some guys go, well, you should have laid 21. Yeah, okay, I understand. You're up 35 nothing. You should put that team away. So that was a little alarming. Army's defense can present some challenges, but I think the hardest thing, Will, when you look at Army against Notre Dame, is the the athlete disparity. Notre Dame just has such better athletes, and their defense could be could be a top eight defense in the country. And can Army move the ball on them? They couldn't move it against North Texas, so now they're going to move it on Notre Dame. That's what's emblazoned in my mind. I I probably won't bet this game. I I lean to Notre Dame. But north of 14, it's. I would have loved to lay 14, but 14 and a half, I'm jaded by the hook because of what happened last week. Yeah. And look, you should be jaded by the hook. I mean, this is all price price sensitivity matters, and it's not the same as 13 and a half, 14, 14 and a half. Like those, these half points matter. I mean, you just write down every bet you lose by half a point all year. There's going to be a lot of bets you, know, you win or lose by half a point. Uh, I like Notre Dame. I just look at Army schedule, and it's a lot of Tulsa and Temple and Rice and Air Force. Uh, that North Texas game, boy, that was so misleading because North Texas was inside the five like five times and ended up losing fourteen to three. I, I just think Notre Dame can run it, run it at will. I don't think Army can keep them in, you know, third and long, second and long. I just think Notre Dame dictates. I'm, I'm not in love with laying fourteen and a half, but I do think it looks a little similar to the Navy game. It, it scares me that Bear doesn't share the sentiments, but it, it would be Notre Dame or nothing for me, guys. I share them, Will. Does my All right, there we matter? go. Now I feel um, better. Look, I, uh, look, I, guys, it, I'm looking at, at the, uh, like, I don't have Sammy's power rankings. So I have to go off of basically SP+. Plus. I mean, the, the best team they play is East Carolina. They're 79th overall. Notre Dame is eighth. Eighth. Like, it, this is just a big step up in talent. You're, look, you're right. The, the possessions could be limited. You, you mentioned that earlier, Sammy. But I just see the same thing happening that we saw with Navy, a bigger, stronger, faster team. They already played – Dude, like Notre Dame has played this style of offense. Now Army runs the ball more than Navy does this season, but they they prepared for this offense already three weeks ago. So like, there's no surprise about what Army's going to do to them or try to do them. So uh, I lean Notre Dame here. Um, I'm hoping that we've seen the trend on Saturdays, really Friday night, Saturday, that these dogs get hit hard and the number comes down fast, and I get a good Notre Dame number um, come Saturday morning. Uh, that's something to wait for. So I could just give you the two quick numbers I have there. Not that these numbers are the end all be all, but if they play to their ratings and they play to their styles that they played at all year, Notre Dame is a 124 and Army is a 106 and a half. So that's, you know, that's almost 18 points on a neutral. Yep. Which and then, not you add in, then you add in home field. Not that they're relevant, Sammy, but I, I, we talked about this team in the group thread, and this is a team I love, and they're not going to get in. But uh, what is South Carolina? Because I love watching that team every week. They, that's a team that missed opportunities against LSU with the quarterback getting hurt. You know, Bama, they were in the game. Uh, I think that team's really underrated. I've got, for context, I've got Indiana three points better than South Carolina. South Carolina, 115, Notre Dame, 124. So yeah, Notre Dame, nine points better than South Carolina, and South Carolina is nine points better than Army. Um, I would take South Carolina plus nine against Notre Dame. I would, I would, if they play, I would, I would love that wager. I think um, they might beat Clemson but, in a couple weeks. That would not surprise me. Cle, Cle, it, it, Clemson's one of those teams where I don't know how good they are. That was a really eye-opening performance on their home field when they when they lost to Louisville uh, a couple of weeks back, and they really should have lost last week. It, Pitt, Pitt had them beat, yep, and uh, and and they got away. We, I, I'd be really curious to see what that number is next week uh, in, in that game. Because I, I agree. I think that's a game that Shane Beamer is really going to want. Uh, speaking of, it's so funny. You were talking, Will, earlier about how this feels like yesterday we were talking about uh, early season, preseason, win totals, bets, all that stuff. Like, one of the more popular narratives that we heard throughout the offseason and going into the season was Arizona State under, Arizona State ah. Big 12 wins under, and here they are controlling their destiny to get to the Big 12 title game, and now they're favored uh, <laughs> against BYU, who the bubble finally burst uh, late Saturday night at home against Kansas. Uh, Scadaboo and Levitt and, and Kenny, Kenny Dillingham, like we've talked about some great coaching jobs, and certainly there have been a bunch with, I think, Signetti having this thing wrapped up. 
But uh, ASU 8-2 and two, and an opportunity to go 10-2 and two and play for a conference title uh, in a year where most people kind of thought this was a four-win team tops. Uh, kudos to them. Can you can can you lay the three here against BYU? Which look they they lost last. It's funny because they lost last week, but that was just more of a of all the games that they played this year that they have won have won and or could have lost. Like that was not that was a game they deserved to win and they didn't. So it kind of just the, the the coin flip situation kind of caught up with them last week. Uh, do we want to get involved here with ASU laying three against BYU? Or do we think? Uh, ASU to win the conference is, is is a better bet here to make. I, I I don't I don't know where I where I land with this right now because it's, there's still like a little bit of hesitation in the back of my mind about ASU despite the record telling me otherwise. I, I like ASU. I just think the run game will be difficult for BYU to uh, to contain. Levitt's played incredibly well. Uh, I just think they're well coached. I think this is a solid team in BYU. A uh, little bit of a paper tiger, so I would go with Arizona State and uh, you know. I hope next year maybe we can do some of these shows earlier because it's a reminder for next year. If you like a team in this era of the transfer portal NIL, take a swing because there's so much variance where we think we know, but it's not like you know years past. All right, they're they're returning their quarterback, they're returning seventy percent of their team, and they won a bowl game. We know how good they're going to be. There's just these are all new teams. You know the variance with Colorado, with Arizona, all of these teams. There's just so such highs and lows it makes predicting the the season win totals very difficult. But uh, you know there's going to be teams in, in this new era, 30, 40, 50 to one in, in, to win the conference that are live. So uh, just something to keep in mind. Uh, I do think Arizona State wins here, though, Sammy. Oh, that comment just went right in my side, too, because that was my handicap on Kansas coming into the season. <laughs> they bring everybody back except for the offensive coordinator. And yeah. then, uh, but Kansas also, I, I know a lot of people down in Kansas. The one guy goes, Every loss we have this season, we were leading in the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I thought, Wow. That's how close they are to being a, a much better team. I mean, they're four and six. They could easily be. You know, eight and two if if everything went their way, but we don't play the if game on the show. No. And we'll talk about Kansas next. What's up, Jeff? I, I didn't say anything. Barrett, oh, I, you, I, heard no, I, I, was, I was being sarcastic and playing the if game. I was like, no, of course we don't. Well, I mean, it, look, guys, USC is only six plays away from being undefeated, okay? So the if <laughs> game can be played it. if you're Lincoln Riley. Look, I, I'm an Arizona State fan because I like Kenny Dillian, their coach. Um, but I. I my thing about this game in general is that I think Arizona State's defense can be so hit or miss in a given game that they might give up a ton of points and then have a game where they don't. And to me, that's too much variance to wager on them in this game. They're at home. The, the place is sold out. It's fantastic. It's great for the. It's great for him as a program. It's great, but to me, Will, the defense is just – I just don't trust them. Uh, I trust the offense. I trust what he can do offensively with, with, with Levin and Scadab, who's a little beat up. But defensively, every game sort of is different. There's nothing they can rely on, in my opinion, that I feel great about in this spot. Yeah, Dillian, we, maybe we should have him on the show because I don't know if you guys heard, he's referenced the point spread a few times. Like, well, this week we're going to be like a 7, 10 point underdog, and everyone's going to count us to get, uh, count, uh, you know, count us out. And then when they went over their win total, he's encouraging people, hey, if you bet our win total over, donate the money to the program. So uh, he's got his finger on the pulse of uh, of our world here, which I always appreciate. And, you know, you mentioned coach of the year. I, I got to go back and find it. I don't know if you remember this, Bear, but you sent out the coach of the year odds, which again, we don't have in Connecticut. And I think Signetti was six to one. I was like, oh, man, he's definitely winning he's absolutely going to win of course no bets on it so that's a frustrating one is that we, we think he's probably going to win this award so man those those bets you don't make that end up winning are just are, are more painful than bets you actually make and lose for whatever reason well bets that we made and hope we are hoping to win involve travis hunter and that statue that's going to be handed out on what december 14th i think it is, is, is nope it's on the 7th i have it in my calendar okay Oh, no, no, it is the 14th. You're right. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Say, my bad. Seven my to bad. Seven it's the 14th. Conference championship weekend. My bad. I jumped the gun. That's my bad. It's on That's the okay. 14th at 8 p.m. Eastern. $50 yeah. fine. <laughs> yeah, but Sam, Sammy, they, they all announced it at 8.55. So the first 55 minutes, you don't have to watch. Okay. And, and, and then the Junction Boys or something else will be on it. <laughs> at night, 9, 10, they'll get to it. And I wonder what they got the pl- I wonder what they got planned post Heisman this week. This year. Usually we get some uh like Put some good thirty for thirties on there. The the U is on the Junction Boys, a bunch Junction of stuff. Boys. Yeah, how about that? That's a pull right good, there. Good, good pull, right? Yeah, Anyways. I like it. 
Colorado, two and a half point favorite at Kansas. Uh, the Grim Reaper of the Big 12, KU got Iowa State a couple weeks back. We're on that. KU got BYU last week. We were on that. We're going to go back to the well here with, with, with KU as a slight dog at, at Arrowhead. I, I think it's really cool that you have Travis Hunter and Shadur Sanders. Guys are going to probably be taken in the top five, certainly ten next year in the NFL draft, playing at an NFL stadium, home of the two-time defending a Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs, where Pat Mahomes is running around wild, winning MVPs and uh, being the best quarterback in the league. Like, I, I think that's a cool storyline uh, to to look at this weekend. And does it affect the handicap at all? No, I, I just think it's it's cool with two guys that are going to be longtime staples in the league. Oh, <sighs> I will be playing Kansas on the uh, plus the two and a half. I might even buy it up to three just to, to ha- just in case, uh, being that we do have that exposure on Travis Hunter, kind of a like, who knows what's going to happen if Colorado were to lose this game. Is it still Hunter? He's such a massive favorite right now. Will, you've made the point, and, and I've actually uh, – copyrighted you on it as well like he may not be tied to a win-loss record yeah like a quarterback is just because he does things on both sides of the ball and like win-loss record may not apply to him like do you do you think that colorado has to win and get to the big 12 championship game for hunter to win or do you think cu can survive a loss here and hunter is so big of a favorite in the circumstances kind of indicate that he's going to win uh, it's gray because I wrote for Fox last week and they, they you know, they were, um, they're like, Hey, write your thoughts on the Heisman at the time Hunter was even money. And I prefaced it by saying, Hey, you missed the long shots. You missed the huge numbers, but you got to play the ball where it lies. And at current numbers, Heisman, uh, Hunter at even money was the best bet, which I thought he was now at minus 400. I don't know that that move was justified because they kind of scripted it for him to get a touchdown to pad his stats. And, uh, you know, the ball got tipped and he, and he caught it for the interception. He got burned a couple times in coverage. So again, I think he should be favorite. I just don't know that he should be minus 400. I saw Gabriel's up in like the 30 to 35, one range. That seems high. Uh, maybe, maybe a field bet. If, if some of these books are offering Hunter versus the field and you can get the field at you know, plus 250, plus 300, that would be interesting. Uh, and again, it goes back to price sensitivity just because I like, Connor last week doesn't mean I like him this week at minus 400. I think that number's a little high. I do think they win this week. I, and I don't know if, if you guys, we talked about Colorado 9 to 1, 12 to 1 to win the, uh, the Big 12. I have yep. some of it. I have, you know, some uh, some exposure, as they say, on Colorado here. So I'm tempted to play Kansas. But as far as this game, like isolated, I actually think Colorado wins. I was on Kansas last week. I wasn't overly impressed. Uh, they got outgained pretty significantly against BYU. And I just don't know if they can get enough pressure on Sanders. And if you don't get pressure on Sanders with their receivers, I know Kansas got some guys that can cover. Uh, if you don't get pressure, he's going to kill you. So can they get enough stops? I think Kansas will get their points. Uh, if Daniels is, uh, is on, it's going to be scary. But I, I think Colorado wins a high-scoring game here, Sammy. This was the message that I sent to the group thread this week. It's the, uh, <laughs> it's the Grim Reaper. There's there's the Jayhawk. <laughs> he takes down Iowa State. He takes down BYU. And now maybe Colorado. I know this, Bear. You don't have to admit this. I know if you didn't have Travis Hunter or Heisman, you wouldn't even bet this game. I Correct. know it's a hedge. I know how you are, Correct. and I understand it because you have a number that I only dreamed of having earlier in the season. I couldn't pull the trigger. I have mostly single-digit numbers on Hunter. Doesn't it feel like, though, they've done everything as a college football collective to prop up Travis Hunter? Yes. I go back a couple weeks ago. He's on the set of Big New Kickoff and yep. the other show that we will not name. He's on both shows during mm-hmm. the bye week. The Big noon kickoff has been to Colorado how many times in the last two years or been to a Colorado game? Five? This feels like a culmination, a culmination award for the Colorado program to me at this point. Look what Dion has done. Look what this program has done. Look how much better they are. And who's the best player on Colorado? It's Travis Hunter. And we had guys on this show, we have friends in the media that have said eight wins. If Colorado wins eight games, he's winning the Heisman. Now we're talking, well, what if they win 10? What if they win the Big 12? It feels like he's going to win as long as he stays healthy. And what the books are doing right now is just playing defense. All right, you want to bet Travis Hunter? Lay $4. Lay $5. That is an admission that they don't want to write any more bets on Travis Hunter because they know he's probably going to win the Heisman. 
Well, I, I think I mean I think I think Hunter's winning just because no one else has stepped up. I mean, look, I'm an Oregon guy. Obviously, Dylan Gabriel didn't have the best game against Wisconsin. They're off this week, so that's one less uh, opportunity to play in front of the rest of the country. You have again Colorado getting the love as they should for the way they played, and Travis Hunter. He, he makes those wild plays. I stress this every week, guys. Those wild plays are hugely important. Look, again, I'm an Oregon guy. I can barely point out, like, two plays this year. You, you put on, on Gabriel's highlight reel. You know, like, Travis Hunter has them multiple times a game, has those plays. That fourth down catch last weekend was incredible. So, look, I just looked it up right now while, while you guys were talking to make sure I had the right number because Will's exactly right about the way you bet Colorado games. Can you rush the passer? Yes or no? And if the answer is no, they're going to score a ton of points. Kansas right now is ranked 91st in the country by PFF for their pass rush grade. Colorado's going to score a ton of points in this game. Uh, I've been betting their team total over every week nearly. That's uh, over 30 and a half right now. I will be betting that again this weekend. If they do lose, it's 41-38. It's 38-35. Like, it's a high-scoring game, last possession type of thing. Uh, even though Kansas Stevens has been better lately, you shouldn't hold a, uh, it against them. Look, they went into the bye, I think, one in – Six or one and five, and they're three and one since then. So, like, they played better out of their bye. But I think Colorado is one of those teams right now that just sort of has it going. They made more plays against Utah in those big moments than all season long. And, you know, the butterfly effect from that Baylor, the last play of the game, I mean, that should not have been completed. It was, and they haven't lost since, and they pretty much blown everyone out. Um, so, uh, I uh, well, no, they lost the car. It was Colorado State. Iowa, was that- Iowa State was in between that. Iowa State was after that, but your point is still the same. Yeah, they, like uh, Kansas State. Sorry, Kansas State. Kansas State. Um, yes. Yeah, but like they've just played really well against teams like Kansas. So I, I lean Colorado here. They won't be intimidated by playing in, in Arrowhead Stadium either. They're also eight and two ATS, Colorado. Eighty percent of the games they've covered this year. Yep. They score a ton of points, guys. They score a ton of points after not covering Week One against uh, was it North Dakota State? Yep. Yep. And it's interesting because you mentioned about like a high scoring game. I think last week was a bit of an anomaly because I don't think they really felt threatened by Utah and, and their defense did give up some, some points late, but it was never ever a game. And the the way CU's defense has improved this year, they, they don't need a, a high scoring type of game. They, they can win 28, 20 if need be. Uh, getting back to the Heisman, I think there are a couple, of, if you are looking potentially to say Colorado loses here, uh, they don't make the Big 12 championship game, how, what ultimately, how, is there anyone else you can bet? I can't remember if it was on this pod or if it was the uh, uh, Bruce and the Bear on Friday where we talked about potentially a Jalen Milrow who I think is around 27, 30 to 1 right now as well. If they go to Oklahoma and win this week and look good, if they uh, win the Iron Bowl and look good, if they go to the SEC championship game and beat the winner of Texas, Texas A&M, uh, if, they, if that happens, you're looking at an 11 and 2, uh, Alabama, Jalen Milrow, quarterback, SEC champion. We remember what he did against Georgia early in the year. Like that potentially would have legs. You've got the Dylan Gabriel option where uh, if they go 13 and 0, win the Big Ten, quarterback of the number one team in the country, uh, do you get like the Eric Crouch kind of career achievement award? Uh, I think those two guys ultimately still are in play. I don't think you're going to get Ashton Jenny. He's going to go to New York. He's going to have a great weekend. He'll be remembered for having an unbelievable year. He's going to win the Doak Walker. But I don't think any – I think Ashton Genty is a uh, is dead money right now if you're looking to, if you're looking to bet uh, someone else potentially to take this award from Travis Hunter. Not as dead as my – I looked at one of my accounts just now. I got Ollie Gordon to win the Heisman in one of those accounts. <laughs> that, it's early. That's way it's more early. dead. It's early, Sammy. Don't give up on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I got a nice number on Quinn Ewers when he was hurt, thinking he was only going to miss a game and come back. I, I got Quinn like twenty something to one. If anybody wants some of that, I remember being annoyed that I missed out on Arch Manning at like hundred to one when he started to play. So it's funny how these uh, you know, these these take twists and turns along the course of the year. Exactly. Speaking of twists and turns, we all thought. Uh, Florida was headed towards a uh, a very bad season, and Billy Napier might not even be the head coach 
by Thanksgiving, but give the Gators and give Napier credit. They have not quit on him. Uh, they have played hard. They have improved. You could make a case that if DJ Lagway did not get hurt against Georgia, uh, potentially they pull the outright upset in that game. Now you're looking at them being uh, the biggest fans of teams like Georgia and maybe a second ACC team or a second Big 12 team as they host Ole Miss and Lane Kiffin, uh, double-digit underdog at the Swamp. Um, feels like a lot of people are probably going to be on the home dog here uh, just because of the, what I just kind of alluded to, that you have Florida playing better. Now you got Ole Miss kind of you, you just pulled the upset the last time you played. You kind of control your playoff fate. I have no play on this game right now. I don't know if I'm going to get involved. Uh, anybody else have a thought here? Ole Miss minus 10 at the Gators. I would go under just because Ole Miss, I think there's still the perception it's basketball on grass and every game's in the 30s where the offense has been a little underwhelming and the defense is really, really good. They've got some monster players in that front seven. So uh, I could see more, more of an under game. Um, I don't know if you guys have anything or we're going to get to this game. I think the team that... That uh, that Florida beat last week might be in some trouble again. If, if we're looking ahead to LSU, Vandy, I just I don't know where uh, where LSU's heads at. Vandy's been feisty as a dog, so Vandy's one I bet, but nothing for me in terms of uh, Ole Miss, Florida, Sammy. I'm just thinking about Billy Napier and the job he's done this year against you know all odds. There were many books that said he'd be the first coach fired coming into the season. Remember, it was him and Sam Pittman were right at the yep. top. And Arkansas has been worlds better than anybody thought. And the five losses that Billy Napier and Florida have this year, Miami, A&M, Tennessee, Georgia, Texas. <laughs> I mean, that's crazy that those are their five losses. That's the anti-Indiana schedule, Jeff. That's the that's Indiana schedule and then <laughs> rotate it. I mean, they play, played every good team this year and they've handled business. They also feel like, like Bear just said, they feel a little trendy. Um, Mississippi opens nine, gets bet up to ten. There's a ten and a half offshore. Um, I don't know. I feel like if I bet Florida this week, I'm a little late to the party. So, Florida's a different team with Lagway, though, right? I mean, this, we're judging them, I think, off of what happened earlier in the season when he wasn't in the lineup. When he's in the lineup, his team just plays overall much better. We know quarterback can affect the team and, and the morale just overall, right? Defensive line, offensive line, defense, offense. Like, I think that, that that's all true. But the problem is, guys, Old Miss is just really good. I think we look at, at Lane Kiffin maybe and think, like, how is that possible? Because sometimes he does goofy things and says Thank goofy you, stuff. Coach. But, their their defense a lot, but Bear, it's their defense, Bear. Yes. They're, they went in, they went and spent money on that defense, and their defensive line is maybe the best in the country. Um, and they just get after teams. And and you have a true freshman playing quarterback against that defense. I do worry about Florida's ability to move the ball in this game. So I would lean Old Miss here. This number was seven in the summer, by the way. I, I got Old Miss minus seven. I made three wagers uh in, in the in the preseason basic market for future games. I, I hit one with uh, we drove about Nebraska early against Colorado. I had had Utah minus eight last weekend. That did not work out for me very well. I thought <laughs> Utah would be nine and one playing Colorado and that game would be like two touchdowns and I have old miss minus seven. So that's I just I'm riding with the wager I already have essentially. You, you know how in the in March Madness you, the, the bracket comes out and you're like, oh, the, the, this is the team you don't want to play, the, the team that's going to make a run to the to like Ole Miss is going to be that team in a couple of weeks, right? When yes. the playoff committee is right, like Ole Miss is going to be the team that nobody wants to play and and, and who the hell knows what's what's going to wind up. That it usually doesn't pan out. But Timmy, you, going back, you mentioned you you were kind of making a comparison about like Indiana being the anti-Florida. What what are your number like? What do you have Indiana power rated at compared to uh, to Florida? Indiana's one eighteen, Florida's one fifteen and a half. So, so there you go. Yeah, I, it's not it's not apples to apples, but you could maybe maybe make a very good case using two teams that are similarly power rated. One's ten and zero, one's five and five. That if Indiana were to play Florida's schedule, they're probably a five and five or a six and four team. Well, that was the, that's what happened last week when Kansas played BYU. I had a higher rating on Kansas than I did on BYU, even though BYU was undefeated. Like records, records mean less and less. The older I get, win loss record means less and less to me. As, as we've preached in all of my years in the playoff era, 
all one loss records are not created equal. And uh, another one of those all one loss records are not created equal type teams, Oklahoma. Uh, Sooners, five and five. Played all Miss pretty tough in Oxford. Got blown out by Texas in the Red River game. Uh, blew blew the Missouri game. Should have won that game. Should have should have beaten uh, Auburn as well. I like they're five and five. This is still a Brent Venables defense that I think potentially could give Alabama some trouble. We've seen Alabama go on the road to Neyland and really struggle offensively. We've seen that South Carolina front give them trouble uh, moving the ball. I played this at 14. Unfortunately, it's down to 13 and a half right now. I think Alabama needs to be careful this week. I, I, I think with all of the hype down, with me just talking about maybe Jalen Milrow uh, getting to the to New York and maybe a dark horse Heisman candidate if things break right, Alabama may be winning the SEC. Like This is a tricky game. I, I think Oklahoma, it's still a program – a blue blood with a lot of pride and a head coach who's defensive minded would not surprise me in the least. We were talking about those double digit underdogs to pull out right upsets before you kind of look up there on Saturday night and like, Oh my God, Oklahoma is up 17, 13 at start of the fourth quarter. I would think we're going to get one, uh, one giant curveball here in these last couple of weeks where I can't believe this team lost just the nature of college football. I don't know if it's this week. I don't know if it's this game, but that's the tricky part is trying to, you know, figure out which game it is. It'd be dog or pass for me. You're missing the best number with a 13 and a half, but I, I do share your sentiments. So I'm not betting the game, but I do have a very big number that I wanted to play over under with real quick. If we can, if Oklahoma, decides to get rid of Venables at the end of the season, mm -hmm. the buyout is over or under $41.5 million. What over. do we think? Over. over. Oh, it's a bad line. Yeah, it's way over. Yeah, Well, not yeah, way no. over. It's I, I, I only million. knew that because I, I saw the, 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 the stories and the quotes from – like, that's the thing. Joe is a very loyal guy, and Brent was there in a long time. Now, I think he's going to be back. And, and we'll see what happens. That, that's why I, I think all of that narrative, I think, is going to – like, he is a very emotional guy who – that stuff motivates him. I, I think we're going to see a good performance from OU on Saturday. Okay. And another team in the SEC that we're potentially talking about getting to the SEC championship game, maybe playing Alabama – uh, they got the uh, the Longhorns next week in College Station. But first, they got to go to the prettiest little village on the plains. They got to go to Auburn. They got to go to Jordan-Hare and play a 4-6 and six Auburn team that looks terrible. And here you go, number 15, Texas A&M, a 25 point favorite on the road at poor old Auburn who can't move the ball, can't score. Who's gonna, who, who wants to sit with me? Who wants to ride with me this week? With the little war damn eagle plus two and a half against the Ags. I took money line. Ooh. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, I did. Love I mean, you. you talk about a team. So we've talked about Florida and we've talked about Kansas. Auburn is is right there in that ilk in terms of high power rating, poor execution. And that might not excite people to want to bet them, but this is the stinkiest line. On the entire board. And and it's so funny because every show last night, well, what happens if AM beats Texas? And what happens if what happens if Auburn beats AM? Then what? Then what are you gonna do with your algorithm? This this game should be a pick'em. Numbers wise, it should be a pick'em. I can't I I understand everything you're saying, and I would bet the under if anything, because I think this could just be ugly, nasty, low scoring game. I just think ultimately the best of the four units is the AM defense. And I think they uh, you know, maybe get some turnovers here and win the game with their front four, their front seven. So I will pick AM to win the game. I'm not sure that I'm betting it though, Jeff. I think so too, Will. But then you think back about what what happened in in, in, yeah. in, in Columbia against South Carolina. And they just yep. they, good point. They were terrible. And that they were. really Surprise me, and you and you worry about the injuries now on uh, the running back. That running back room is even further decimated, Jeff. Yeah, um, this is just a really big look ahead spot for AM. I mean, their coach already screwed up a press conference line by saying we're not focused of, uh, or, or all our focus is on Ta o Auburn. Like, I think it's a, it's a really it's a massive look ahead spot for a a team playing together for the first time this season, right? Like, I was the first time coach there, and everyone's already talking about the Texas game. Texas game. Texas game. Kim just mentioned it. We talked yesterday about 
whether or not Texas is going to even be a playoff team if they lose to AM. We both bet on Texas, know it, it what, plus 680, something like that, right. um, it's assuming they're going to lose to AM. And I just think it's a tough spot. Every road conference game, guys, is hard. We know that, especially when teams are sort of equal in talent. And, and Sammy mentioned it, her ratings. Um, I'm not doing anything with the, this one, Barry. I wish you luck watching this game. Um, but it would not surprise me if they lost because that's sort of college football. Yeah. Tough place to play, tough environment. Auburn's still playing for a bowl game, by the way, right? Yep, they tough road into this week for, and they got a bowl, bowl game. game. But I think a lot of people are assuming AM is going to win out. And that's typically the problem in a team. Not, again, what we think is not the way a team plays, but they hear that stuff too. And I think they're already looking ahead to Texas. Oh, wait, Honestly, hey, hey, hey. Go you ahead, might want to wait too. I mean, if, you, if you're if you're on the sidelines right now and you're thinking about Auburn, you could probably get a three. I mean, this this is on the way. It's already a juice two and a half. But Bear, I, talk about numbers. Circa opens all these games on Sunday afternoon. They opened Auburn plus one. So their true numbers are basically a coin flip, and that's worth understanding. Yeah, maybe, maybe I'm, I might wait until uh, I see a three and release my column when I, when I see a three. That way, I can get a uh, a better number on that, which which would be nice. By by the way, I went back and looked uh, just because people people love the the notes and the history. Uh, you go back since 2016, there have been 14 top 15 teams that have been favored by a field goal or less against a team with a losing record. 14 teams, four and ten straight up, two eleven and one ATS, and that of course includes uh, BYU's lost last week at home to uh, to Kansas. So uh, line line stinks for lack of a better word. Uh, usually the uh, follow the smell because that will leave you in, in the right direction. Speaking of smell, Sammy, hmm. has, has Idaho State gotten a stop yet? No, they oh, have boy. not. They have not. Yeah, I mean, look, I I wear it better than most. I. It was a horrible, horrible FCS pick. I, it hurt me too. And then I got, I got the guy on Twitter saying, "Oh, these last two have been brutal. Like okay. they're sixty percent the last three years. What, yep. what do you want from me?" The one guy tweeted at Will too. I love this. They tweeted at Will, new to new FCS guy. I'm like, no, that's actually me. I'm the FCS guy. <laughs> one guy tweeted at not the Will Hill and said, "New to new FCS guy." I'm like, nope, that's that's my fault. Um, I have not heard anything. Yet. I, I sent a text about an hour ago. He said, I'm looking through him right now. I don't have anything for you now, but I will I will tweet. I'm not I'm not scared. And you guys want the plays to stop? I mean, yeah, I no, hell no. Okay. All right. Hell, I mean, we have right. I, I just been lucky enough to always remember to bet on the ones we win and forget to bet on the ones that have been losers. So it's a I'm great a skill to have. Season. Yeah. yeah just the most like important for, skill is like, a better. Yeah. <laughs> like, for, like last night, I forgot. I just forgot to do it. And then Sammy sent a text to like Eastern Washington had seventy seven points. So glad I glad I forgot to bet it. Look, three of the last four have lost. There's no ignoring that. Like I'm not hiding from that. But four of the first five won. So you you have to paint the whole picture. It is it is funny though. Well, not funny when you give a team that opens six that closes three and a half and then they give up a touchdown on every drive. That that's kind of funny. I mean, I I don't know. Would you rather lose giving up seventy seven or lose at the horn? I I would rather oh. the former every time. I don't want you to stop giving the picks because we have our buddy who used to give out the college basketball picks. Those have gone away and that's been very disappointing. So keep keep giving. Oh the picks. oh no, the oh, college basketball the way. picks. Oh, we have an update. Oh, what? What will Jeff? There was I, I will text you guys. There was one given out today. First one, one. of the year. Okay, yeah, just one. Something. Yeah, third and nothing. Yeah, good because I haven't made a college basketball bet yet because of that. I'm sorry. No, not a one. No. Oh wow. Well, your first one will be tonight. Perfect. Good. <laughs> Who we got here? Sammy loves it so much. He he loves that we actually follow through on this. Like I, I know we actually Bear and I in in fact took the opposite wager the entire college basketball season last year. So you would oh. think with all the wagers you would juice out, but still no, 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 because no, <laughs> when you when you go, when you go forty four percent, and and the thing Sammy too you is like when this person had a like a winning day, the next day you just do double your unit. And like she, and oh, excuse me, they would go um, oh. like two and eight. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> they would go two and eight. And so it was a, it was a good system I had last year. Uh, yeah. Will, great dinner coming up Friday night in Columbus. 
Oh man, Jeff Ruby Steakhouse, the barrel cut fillet, best piece of best piece of meat that you'll ever. Uh, it's like butter when you cut it. It's fantastic. Oh. So what do, what do we got? Appetizers? What else? What what's for lunch on uh, Saturday? What's the whole thing? Great, great uh, sushi appetizers there. Okay. I'm always a sucker for French onion soup, so I'll, there'll, there'll definitely be some French onion soup. Good time of year for it too. And the, and then and then I am not like oh I'm not like a sweet guy or a dessert guy normally, but typically what will wind up happening for the table is he, they has like the like the the butter cake which you get one of those, and then certainly in Ohio in the Columbus uh, restaurant they have this Buckeye pie which is kind of like peanut butter and chocolate and it's it's awesome. So you. You get one of those each for the middle of the table, and you kind of just each stick a fork in every now and then have a have a couple bites each. To what do you sit next to in these functions? It depends. Back, I mean, it depends. This week, I'm actually I'm actually going with a a good friend of mine and his wife and their little four year old daughter, who will be happy to uh, see Uncle Chris. So I'm I'm going with we're going with them. But typically, uh, the team dinner it, it depends. Sometimes I sit next to. The urban sometimes i sit next to brady sometimes um, i sit next to matt sometimes i sit next to uh scott we're gonna Bruce just name drop everyone yeah name drop that's what, I, mean, that's, that's I set him up for it though i asked him bruce, bruce feldman sometimes I sit next to him like sometimes i sit next to ashley rad it doesn't just doesn't matter bear rubs up with the stars so much when he said brady i wasn't sure if you meant brady quinn or tom brady that's, tom, that's tom brady of, okay tom brady of course i wasn't sure either we need to by the way we need to go we all need to go to a game next year on a saturday i'll bring my binocular flask and we can all have a great time it'll be awesome please do that'll be fun Bear, bear bets on the road. Let me do it. Do a, a, a live I'll, I'll bear a, bets like a, a bear a bear bets live betcast or something on a uh, a college football Saturday. How about that? Look, I'll, I'll be in Atlanta January twentieth. If you guys all want to join me, so you can we, we we can make it happen that day. What's what's going on that day? Oh, the CFP championship game. I'm just I'm going to be there. Why so are you, you going? Why are you going, going to see know. Oregon? I'm going to cover it. We'll see what happens. <laughs> I'm, I'm busting your chops. <laughs> On that note, I, th- I, th- I think we're good. I saw I saw Jeff just texted me. I'm getting very excited to to read this text now that he just sent to the group. It's like so, opening a present Christmas morning. I, exactly. I gotta wait. Get I gotta ready. Wait until, I gotta wait until we're done to read it. I can't wait. Anyway, guys, appreciate you. We'll uh, we'll talk again next week. Hope you guys have a successful wagering weekend. All right, Bear. We just got the text from 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 Sammy in the Gamma Group Chat about the FCS play that was not included in previous taping of Gamma Group Chat. He said, I just want to make sure we have this right here, South Dakota this weekend against South Dakota, against North Dakota State. Against the Bison? Yes, uh, South wow. Dakota. Now, there's no number yet, obviously, but 8-2 um, well, South a dog, Dakota. For sure. uh, they lost at Wisconsin Week 2. They lost at, at, at South Dakota State you know, a couple weeks ago. Otherwise, they're eight and two. A lot of wins. North Dakota State obviously um, has uh, not lost since they played Colorado all the way in Week One. So South Dakota's the way to go. How do you feel about that, Bear? How are you feeling? About I that believe play? they're the Yotes, right? They're the, the, the South Dakota Coyotes. I think they are. If you, if you say so, ninety-nine uh, percent. I, I believe you. You're a fearless I'm gonna, leader. I'm going to check that out. All well, right, Bear. While you check while that out, talking about your fades and best bets and stuff. Let's let's do my fade of the week here. We're going to fade the Oregon State Beavers uh, against uh, Washington State. Right. A, a pack two, a pack two game uh, this weekend in Corvallis. But here's really why we're doing Oregon State right now is just not playing good ball, guys. Um, they lost their last three games: forty-four seven, twenty-four thirteen, and twenty nothing to Air Force Bear, who stinks this past weekend. Air Force they actually playing better lately, Jeff. They are. I stopped fading them. I, I, I got the fade train. Luckily, well, I, I took I took Oregon State last weekend. I, I lied. Uh, questions at quarterback injuries. Bear, if I were to ask you how many passing touchdowns does Oregon State have this season, what would you guess? Passing touchdowns for the Beavers. Ooh. Six, four, four wow. passing touchdowns this year. Washington State's offense fantastic. Tenth in points for driving the country. Their, their defense is a little bit iffy. Bear, we, I just gave you a bunch of defenses that aren't very good. The Oregon State can't score upon her now because they're injured. The quarterback, and we only have one wide receiver that's really any good. The offense line is fine, but they have an injured running back as well. So I think the Cougs go into uh, Corvallis and uh, cover this game by a by decent amount. They might score in the uh, 40s in this game, Bear. So give me the Cougars here. Kind of sad 
for Oregon State, I know you're probably not sad, but I think you look at the way you know, this five-game losing streak and how poor uh, they've been, especially defensively. Like this, really just reeks of your roster being just gutted by the demise of the Pac-12, and now you're kind of playing with almost yeah. like, like a, I don't want to say FCS level team, but like group of uh, group of five. Yeah. They- they, they knew they were in for a rebuild this year. I don't. I don't. I like Oregon State. Not like it's maybe the wrong word, but I have friends who coach there. Like I, I know what they're going through. To your point about roster, and then the hard part is you're going to hopefully have to retain. I mean, Trent Walker is their wide receiver. I'm looking up right now. Fair. He has 96 targets this year. Their next, um, their next wide receiver is 33. Like he's a guy that people are going to call about in the offseason. So it, it's hard right now for the Beavers, and I think Washington State comes in there. And Washington just lost too. So we will. Uh, a uh, little motivation there to, to play well this weekend. Uh, so give me uh, the Cougars. What is your uh, what's your best bet now? Uh, for the best bet, how ba- how bad are the bottom of the rankings? By the way, that if Wazoo can lose to New Mexico and, and they're still ranked, like that, that that's what we're looking at here in I, terms of the the bottom of the poll. I feel like I feel like sort of once you get past like the top twelve people, mm-hmm. just. 14. Just look at records. Just look at records and like, oh, they're in two. Oh, right, they're in. Like, it's just it, they just kind of give up. They don't give their best effort. Anyway, speaking of which, you um, you asked for my best bet of the week, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. I, I shall deliver. Hopefully, uh, I mentioned it earlier in the gambling group chat. I took Oklahoma uh, plus fourteen. It's plus thirteen and a half now. Unfortunately, uh, I will still take it at plus thirteen and a half for all the reasons. Uh, that I talked about. I think Brent Venables is a very prideful man. I think this is a very proud program to be a, a two touchdown underdog on their home field uh, is a little bit of a slight for a team that, uh, look, I don't think they're a great team, but they certainly have a couple of games where they have lost them late because of some poor coaching decisions, kind of inexplicable losses. Uh, and now you've got an Alabama team that has struggled moving the ball at times this year away from home and against a really good defense in South Carolina. So it uh, would not surprise me if we're talking about Alabama uh, potentially being the, an SEC champion. If they get to the, uh, the title game in Atlanta, if they can win this week, they can win the Iron Bowl. A uh, lot of points here. I'm going to uh, I'm gonna wind up taking uh, OU plus the uh, 13 and a half here. You, you can do you sprinkle on the money line bear? Or you staying yes, like I will. I, I will play a little money line as well because yeah, we talked okay. about it in the group chat. Like they, there are – I mean, Oregon, Wisconsin last week we, was right there for yeah. Wisconsin to, to to win. Like the, the South uh, San Jose State got up fourteen points on Boise, and, and if Kenny Amatololo would have kicked the field goal, it's seventeen. Oh, so it frustrating! Up. Yeah, and who know? And who knows what the course of that game is from there? But we, we we've seen some double digit dogs uh, pull some wind out and give some pretty big scares. Um, we'll see what happens in uh, in Norman on Saturday. I haven't had a lot of bad beats this year in college football. I'm mostly just either lost or won, like basically like outright. Not, it hasn't been very difficult. Bear that that Boise State won last weekend with San Jose oh, State was right side wrong was, result. was 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 a, was a kick in the pants. I mean to have a a pick six there at the very end of a game where they were up, um, you know they were up for you know within the number I should say for the entire game was kind of a bummer there. All right, Bear. Here's my best bet presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. I'm taking Michigan minus ten at home this weekend against Northwestern. This is a little disrespectful, this line, Bear. This is a little much for me. Um, we talked about earlier, teams off a of bye. Michigan's off a of bye, which I like. They're rested. They, they showed some fight against Indiana. I think there's concern this year, like, how much fight are we going to see in this team, right? Especially a team that, w- w- that was a title game last season. They fought all year, Bear. And a side note, Biff Pochi got fired by Charlotte. He's back in Michigan already, which really, he helped Harbaugh. There's, I think it's, it's important. Hold off, off sleeves back the sideline with Sharon Moore. One of the other guys. Northwestern has played five light teams to Michigan. All right. They lost to Washington 24 to 5, Indiana 41 24, Wisconsin 23 to 3, Iowa 40 14, and Ohio State 31 7. How the hell did they score 24 points on Indiana? That was a game um, in. Do uh, you remember the under in that game? There was a weird win thing. Oh, that's they right. Scored. That was the game where we all had the under. When the, we moved the under yeah. like. Yeah, but Northwestern scored a bunch of points early, and then uh, and then that was about it. So I just think this is disrespectful to to Michigan, who is 
not that bad bear. Like they have some issues, surely. They're, they're good average. on defense still. They're yeah, they're, yeah, but they're good on defense. And they're better than Northwestern by 10 points at home. Like this game is going to be 28-10. And I'm fine taking Michigan here. Just, just because Northwestern scored early last week, I watched probably two drives too many of the North- Northwestern offense that I really needed to see. Yeah, I, um, yeah, I certainly couldn't uh, couldn't get there. That's for sure. So we'll be rooting for uh, both of our uh, our big our best bets presented by uh, DK Sportsbook. There, I got a double digit dog. Jeff's got a double digit favorite. Uh, we gave some cases for a lot of other. Uh, Potential uh, up, upset money line picks in the uh, in the gambling group chat as well. Yes, appreciate uh, Sammy P and Will again for joining us. I appreciate everybody out there for downloading on Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, checking us out on our YouTube channel as well. Uh, again, Wednesday college football, Thursday NFL, Friday Bruce and the Bear columns throughout the week on FoxSports.com. You know where to find us, and remember, the less you bet, the more you lose when you win.